Uh, and because <laughs> at 9.30 exactly, the uh, cell phone still dropped on me, I'm outdoors. We're going to try a little bit of... Okay, where's the thing? Right there. Okay, be careful touching buttons. We're going to try to go... Take the girls. Come on, chickawoos. The chickens are out in the yard over there. I can't. I'm being careful with the phone, okay? The chickens are over there. We're going to go feed. And Wendy, because the chickens are out, Miss Wendy's in the little crate for a few minutes to keep everybody safe. Because Wendy does like to chase the chickens. I assume she's trying to play with them, but that doesn't work well. So I don't know how well the signal will be right here for a few minutes, but uh, you guys get a few minutes of, uh, sounds silly, but chicken TV or something. But that's because when I started, <laughs> there was no signal. And so, okay. Yes, the chickens have been all over this what used to be my garden space because it's a covered garden because out here and we turned I turned it into the chicken house well we also have had a I hope you guys can hear me we also um, have had a uh, test of my egg allergy and darn it, I am very allergic to eggs. And so uh, a neighbor, these were the lay-in boxes I had started to build. A neighbor has asked if they could please be the recipients of the chickens under the circumstances. Come on, girls. And these these chickens are so funny. They can, I wanna let Wendy out so she won't be barking. And uh, I, I really didn't plan this to be this what kind of happened for you guys because of my cell phone signal being wonky. And I thought, well, if it's going to be five or ten minutes for the cell phone signal to straighten out, let me go give the hen some more to eat. Where's the other ones? Two more chickens. Where are you chickens? Come on. Two more chickens. Come on, girls. I don't know what you guys are getting to see, but I won't let uh, birds inside. Uh, four with the rooster. Two more chickens. Let me go get the other two, Wendy. Here you are. Come on, girls. Hi, pretty girl. Come on, let's go inside. And oh, I know you like it out here. Let's go get some more food with your rooster. Come on, Miss Chicky. You guys, isn't this fun today? <laughs> I hope the phone's still working. Come on, Miss Chicky, let's go back to the hen house. Come on. Let me go get the door open. Yeah, come on. Come get some more food. Come on. Hopefully you guys are still on the live stream. <laughs> and this isn't too crazy. Oh, poor Wendy, poor Wendy. Come on, Miss Chicky Woos. Uh, I don't know. Those two chickens. <laughs> Those two hens, Miss Wendy. All right. I think I am going to have to... What am I going to have to do? Because I can't take Wendy out. I'm just going to have to leave her for a few minutes. And prop the door open for the hens. All right. You're going to have to stay there, Wendy. I'm sorry, baby. Um, let's see. Let's do this so it's, it's not too hot yet. It's nice and warm, but it's not hot. I have a sweatshirt on. But let's make Wendy a little shade with these couple of broken boards that I haven't taken care of yet. And then... We could start to talk about 
this whole senior thing that's going on with some of us people are starting to get old enough to be seniors. And I didn't want to call myself a senior. I don't know why. Come on, Miss Chicken Woos. There's some more chicken TV. There we go. Go on in, big girls. Come on, big girls. One more, and then I can let... I almost called Wendy Aussie. Then I can let Wendy out. Come on, Miss Chickawoo. Come on, Chickawoo. Oh, no, go the other way. Go in. Good girl. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now I'll be able to let Wendy back out. And lock the door. I don't know what you guys can see when I'm doing it this way. Hang on, Wendy. Hang on. Hang on, big girl. All right. Now I can let you out. Okay, wait. Wait, please. Okay, you can come out. You be a good girl, please. Come on, Wendy. Wendy, come. They're inside. Come on, big girl. All right. Now I can come back to the live stream and act like we know each other here. And I'm going to, let's see, where's my coffee cup? The white one. Around here, guys. It's spring. I have a ton of dirty dishes because I have five less than five gallons of water here. <sighs> yeah. I got to get my water situation straight. Come on, Wendy. Let's turn the camera back around. Wendy is uh, behind me. Come. come. There we go. Okay. Good morning again. And I'll, I'll start to look at you guys' uh, messages and see if I can catch up with y'all, whatever's been happening. And I'm going to sit in this chair, which is low. Wendy, be careful. Oh. So I have not done any of the, you know, intro stuff like kind of normal. Or <laughs> sometimes normal. Whatever's normal, right? Who, who knows what normal is in my life? Um, but if you'd please use, um, three uppercase Q's, this fuzz on my phone, three uppercase Q's to, um, when you have a question you'd like to ask, or if this is a subject you'd really like me to talk about. Okay. Um, I would be more than happy to try to accommodate you guys needs as well as my own. I am so grateful for our lovely little community that comes out on Sunday mornings. Um, this and my Facebook group, um, Keep Living Simply, where I put out a Wednesday uh, weekly update. Those two routines, along with, you know, my beliefs and my Sabbath and holy days, kind of keep my routine going so that I'm not as, not as lonely, not as, I mean, it could be worse. <laughs> I'm trying to be, it could be worse. It could be way worse. So, um. Let me go catch up with who's here. And then we are going to talk about senior things. But let me go catch up and see if I can find questions along the along the way. So good morning, everybody. Hi, Catherine. I'm glad you're here. And Mary and Iris. Good morning. Good morning. Don't forget, I've got the little... Um, I forgot what it's called. They're, they're little emoji things like hearts and stuff that you guys can like filter across the screen. And I also have super thanks and super chats. You may use those to help out me and the channel, but um, I don't get that money for a while. So if you're trying to help me in a financial sense, becoming a member will be more helpful to you after a while. <laughs> and um and um i have cash app and other things if you want to help that way we do have a fund 
physically at Stan's uh, Auto and Diesel in St. John's, Arizona, for um, uh, Recover the White Tracker Fund. Uh, I also have some money that's set aside in Cash App. Somebody donated that way to add to that um, Recover the Tracker. I need about $1,000 to go get it. I already bought a $1,500 new-to-me engine that needs to be rebuilt. Oh, this whole thing has gotten crazy expensive. And there's a lot more to say about those subjects somewhere down the line. But uh, I also have super thanks and super, I mean, I already said that. I also have uh, my Amazon store. When you buy things off of Amazon, if during the 24 hours before you buy whatever you're going to buy, you click on my store, then for no extra cost to you, I get a few pennies. When Amazon gets at least $10 worth of pennies for me, they will deposit it in my um, bank account. And so once in a while, I get a $10 check from, from uh, Amazon, which is helpful. Um, I never figured out how to do the Amazon gift card thing in my wish list. That would be really nice, but whatever. Um, so I have a wish list out there. What else do I want to tell you about? I don't know what else I want to tell you about right now. So, um, okay. Let me go back and see. So all the good mornings from all the, all you guys, um, that's fine, Mary. You just go right ahead and do what you need to do. Um, it's so nice and warm and sunshiny here. We'll talk about weather in a minute. Um, and Mary, I was so surprised to find out that you bought property in New Mexico. Although I kind of know you have family there. So cool, but wow. Um, Sonia, hi. Bernie, hey girl from Puerto Rico. Um, there's Iris. Jeremy, good morning. Yeah, I probably look a little better this morning. Don't feel quite as bad. Yes, I'm drinking at that coffee. I did try to eat a little breakfast this morning. Careful breakfast. Um, Joanne, good morning, Joanne. And Sean. No, no eggs for me, Bernie. There's a whole story. It's bad. Um, uh, I'm checking for Nate. I'm checking you guys' messages. Robert and Nancy, nice to see you guys. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, Iris asked, are you feeling better, Lisa? That is on the heels of, let me explain. Yes, I'm starting to feel better. That's on the heels of, I tried the experiment with the eggs. Hi, Donna Kay. Um, Oh, and Mary, the rats and mice, you're in a war and you can win, okay? Simple Green is your friend and clean up and move everything away from the space you need first. Oh yeah, rats and mice, that's a whole thing. Okay, do I feel better? Yes, part of uh, th th that question is coming on the heels of the fact that I posted on Facebook, what day was it, Thursday? I think it was Thursday. Um, I have been so blessed by these hens starting to lay eggs. I'll show you that in just a minute. I've been so blessed that I decided with my first aid little pouch beside me with lots of, sometimes if I had store, I would throw up 
So we had so many eggs, right, Miss Wendy? That I decided, you guys, I don't think you guys can see her doing that. Anyway, um, I decided to hard boil two of the eggs, see whether I could, whether Wendy would eat one because I tried to give her the first raw egg. Come here, come here, up, up. And she, she wouldn't eat the raw egg at all. So I thought, well, let me hard boil a couple and we'll see if she'll eat a hard boiled egg. And um, she will eat a hard boiled egg. Um, and I thought, well, since I'm testing her, I got plenty of Benadryl, deep breath. I'm going to try it. I'm going to eat. I On Facebook, I told you guys a quarter of a hard boiled egg. I didn't eat that much. I cut it in a quarter. And I was like, no, I'm taking this little tiny piece because I'm scared. Because I've been pretty sick behind eggs before. So I was like, yeah, if I'm going to throw up, I want to throw up a lot. So let's not, let's not do too much. So, um, and within, okay, I didn't have the reaction I have to commercial eggs, which is immediately I'm vomiting and sick for a long time. And my throat starts closing up. This took 20 minutes, a half hour before it started. But then I could feel all the 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 anaphylaxic starting it it anaphylaxic shock for me starts on the sides of the inside of my throat and it was like oh crap the sore throat thing before I get really sick and then I got nauseous and I had a migraine it was bad I so because I'm so rural I'm aware that I need to call the ambulance once I've taken four Benadryl tablets, okay? Um, because I need time for them to be able to find me. I know that I can take up to two more. So at six, nobody can help me unless I'm in the hospital. So at four, I told the EM, the local EMTs that at four tablets, I'll call them. That gives them time to get to me. If I have to take a fifth one, they might be here by the time I take the fifth one. They might be the ones to give me the sixth one, and I'm on my way to the hospital. So that's the arrangement I have, kind of. Well, yeah, it is the arrangement I have. And so, um, so... I, I ended up taking three Benadryls and then going to bed. And I was very sick. And even yesterday morning, okay, so sick enough that like by the time I was like going to bed, I don't know, Jeremy called me somewhere in there and I started coughing really a lot. I, I had been wanting to, but I've been holding back. Anyways, I, I was coughing quite a bit. I was really, you know, just having a hard time listening. And um, so, so yes, I'm very much aware of how serious this is and how far remote I am as to how to be careful and not kill my butt, kill myself. You know, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just saying it's a, it's a serious Allergies are not a joke. And uh, if I wasn't aware enough, this would not be an experiment to be having. But I went to have prick tests for allergies and I reacted so quickly that the doctor refused to test me. What they told my PCP at that point was, um, you tell that lady, that if she thinks she's allergic to anything, just tell her she is. Tell anybody she is because uh, she's so sensitive, we can't even test her. And they tried to test my blood like they do for babies, but they can't, they can't determine much. So I know for sure I'm allergic to propane. I know for sure I'm allergic to milk and dairy, especially from cows. Um, and just a minute and I'll let you out. Um, and ginger, those are some of my big ones, eggs, pretty big here. So I'm, 
I keep plugging and unplugging my phone from a battery pack. Um, how's the battery looking today? Yeah, it's we're using battery more than I thought, but that's okay. Let's turn you around. Uh, even as messy as the cabin is today. There we go. All right. Y'all see in my, my, where's the reduced? Oh. Okay. Are we back yet? There we are. Whoops. We're back. I put the wee boost back on, but I screwed up. All these details. So I was going to show you something else, but let me bring it closer. Put this. Okay. All right. We boost. Phone is in the We Boost cradle. Um, okay. This is this week's batch of eggs from the chickens. And yes, I wrote on them the date once I figured out to do that. It took me a minute. Um, but this is this week's eggs, um, except for three. So one raw one that I tried to give Wendy. She wouldn't eat it. And, and the two that I hard boiled and then got sick behind. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't eat that much anyways. But so, um, so I don't know who's gonna get these. I hope somebody's around that wants them before they, well, they won't go bad right away, but, um, but that's this week's eggs. And Monday, I need to, let me be careful with that comment. Um, so I'm on the other side of the room for a minute. Let me put the eggs in a safe place. And I keep them in the shade. Okay. Oh, that feels like that was a lot. <laughs> because I lost you guys, I get nervous. Um, so let's see. So early this week, I need to go into St. John's. I will take the eggs with me and try to give them away or sell them or whatever I can do with them. So uh, that's what I'll do with the eggs. Uh, okay. I eat them bird eggs all the time. There you go. Um, yeah, blood tests didn't, they, they, my blood is so reactive that they have trouble finding out what it is I'm allergic to. They don't, they're like, crap, we can't even separate it out the way we normally do. At least that's what I was told. So, that being said, I am sitting too low for the, uh, for where this is. Let me see if I can get the, oh, hey, um, Shadow Wolf, welcome. I used to be that way. If the chickens were fed corn or soy, I would react or commercial eggs. But then I've had these hens for how long? A couple months. Close to a couple months. And I fed them completely corn-free, soy-free, and commercial grain free. So basically I've been cooking them beans and rice, sweet potatoes. And when I go to the grocery store, our grocery store produce department bags up halfway good fruits and vegetables for 99 cents. You know, they're starting to go bad. And I would buy bags of that stuff so that they got, you know, one time it was uh, ears of corn and tomatoes and you know, another time I don't, I don't remember a, a cabbage one time. Um, but anyway, so they've been getting fruits and vegetables, sprouts. I forgot. Yeah, I've been sprouts. I've been making them mung bean sprouts and they love lentil sprouts. Anyway, so they've been getting a lot of that food. That way I was controlling my experiment. It didn't work. I first told the lady who had provided me with the chickens. She said, oh no, I'm so sorry. I was so hoping this was gonna work. 
I was so hoping this was going to work too, along with a few other people who knew. And so now we're all at like bummer, but then one of the neighbors who was also hoping along with me, it was going to work. She said, please, 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 can I have the chickens? And I went, oh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that yet. I'm not quite sure what I want to do and I don't feel good. So, and then I don't know. Over the course of a few hours of not feeling good and being talked to about, you know, her asking more and more questions, I was like, okay, look, you, you call dibs. So you get first dibs on the chickens. Okay. And so then I asked the lady who had provided them to me what she wanted. Did she want them back or what did she want? And she said, you know what? I would prefer if you could sell the flock so that you would get some benefit because I was hoping it was going to help with your food budget. I was like, well, I was hoping that too. But anyway, so I don't know. I have told the other lady involved, the neighbor lady involved, that uh, the, the person would like me to benefit somehow. And so I'm like, look, because of my ethics, this is how I'm handling it. You take this information and sit with it a couple of days. I'll do the best I can. And in the next couple of days, let's talk about when you're going to get them, how you're going to get them, and how much stuff you need to make sure you're okay. Because all the new baskets I just got to fix their laying boxes and stuff, she may as well have all that stuff. That, that roosting ladder, she may as well take it. So, because what am I going to do with it, right? I'd have to clean the chicken poop off of it. Yes, it's wood. Yes, it's whatever. But <sighs> So did I answer your question? I do feel better. I'm not 100%. Big allergies for me can take up to two weeks to get over. This one... I'm feeling good enough that probably I'm about over it, but I don't know. I, you know, I've been going through a lot of crap anyways. This winter has been, I feel like this winter has been hard. So let's see, did I miss anything? Yeah, I had seen Donna K was here. So, okay. So let me go back up here. You get really sick, no corn fed, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, but I'm back. So the whole eggs and yeah. Uh, yep, it is. It's great on the barbecue, but right now I ain't trying to, you know, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to harvest them right now. I mean, I know how to do all that stuff. I've done plenty of it. I just don't want to right now. So, um, and they're good, they're good layers. They're only one year old hens and, um, it's a good small flock. And so Jeremy wanted them, but he didn't call dibs fast enough. You guys gotta be quick with me. So when the other neighbor called dibs, it's like, well, you know, anyway, so. All right. Yes. Coffee is an old school allergy medicine. And so I do, I like coffee, but I don't love it. <laughs> I like it. I have a love hate relationship with it every once in a while. I don't know. So I'm basically back to being careful and eating real meat for a minute. Uh, because after the egg thing, I just, I'm uh, just, it's too much. Um, I had, where's my notebook? I had notes <laughs> before all this went a different direction this morning, right? With no signal at first and all. So, yes, um, uh, Shadow Wolf, that is cool, watching the baby chicks chase the mom and learn. 
Um, what's funny is that those hens will follow me all over the yard. Um, I have to watch Wendy. Now, she tried to grab a leg on somebody, so i got to watch Wendy. And I have been training her. But that's quite a job to train out of a dog. A natural instinct to go after a bird. Now, my Yorkies in the past weren't so much interested in birds. They were after rodents, including chipmunks and squirrels. But um, she's mixed with Chihuahua and who knows what else. Her legs are kind of long. I didn't want a dog who had long skinny legs and look at what I got. Anyway, um, Yeah, they told me that there was no way um, because it was the same doctor who was going to do the prick test that would have had to have done the blood test. He refused to do the blood test because he said I was too sensitive and he would never get an answer. I haven't tried that in a while. Um, uh, some of y'all know if you were out here in the last couple of months, you, you knew that I just went through and had the test for Lyme's disease. Two other things. What was it? Lyme's? Uh, toxic mold and mast cell. And they all came back negative. So I'm glad for that. Uh Yeah. So, oh, okay. So, um, so I had notes for things I was thinking about. I do this sometimes, guys. That you know, okay, not not that side, but this side is kind of notes for this is what's happened since last week. What do I want to tell you guys? What do I want to kind of say? So, um, I have been doing a lot of introspection. Well, of course I have. Y'all know it's been a really rough roller coaster, bad weather, winter, being at the cabin, knowing I didn't have enough gas money to go to town or, or I couldn't get out because of the snow and mud. Um, and knowing that I really didn't have the money to be going to town. Um, so not having any visitors, well, not having many one time. Okay. Jeremy came up once. Um, but I haven't had, I haven't had company. I had, uh, Jeremy the one time and I had, uh, Jason and Melinda came that one time with the big overland truck. Um, that's all the company I've had all winter. And, um, I finally have had to, well, I'm going to get to the subject. I finally have had to get to the, come to the realization that I'm technically a senior at 65 years old. Oh gosh. And to start thinking about what does that mean to me? Now, some of this is on the heels of the fact that I do therapy and it is not a question my therapist asked me, but I've been kind of going through this thing. And so Passover's coming up um, in a week from this coming Monday, I believe. And so this coming week, I'll be doing my spring cleaning in preparation for Passover. <coughs> if any of you wants to know why I believe in the holy days or why I keep Saturday Sabbath the way that I do. You let me know in some private kind of way and I will share some information that I found in videos that um, it, it's pretty clear and pretty much what I believe. And so um, I don't think that those people are any longer even on social media. I don't know who the people were that put these videos out, but I found a couple recently that were good. And if you really want to know that stuff, you tell me privately and I'll send you that information that I did not make. 
Okay. So um, because the spring cleaning that happens before Passover is about examining your past year, the way a lot of people do when they're doing New Year's in by the calendar. I prefer God's New Year because it comes in the spring, which makes more sense in my brain. Um, anyway, so the start of God's year is around this time and close to Passover. So what I do in preparation for Passover is you clean your home, your space. And while you're cleaning, in order to try to make sure that you get any leavening out of your um, space, I basically, um, you, I grew up spending the time while you're cleaning, thinking about the stuff you did all last year. And were you being too proud? Were you, you know, just kind of examining it up against your, your beliefs and ethics, okay? Was I being too proud? Was I, you know, how am I stacking up on the love factor? How am I stacking up on, um, on living my true beliefs? Those kinds of things. And so, you know, I'm this week, I'll be scrubbing windows. There's you know, I've had the, the wood stove's been going this winter. And of course, there's a little bit of a film of the couple of times some smoke got inside. I don't know if I, yeah, it doesn't show on my finger, but but the windows are dirty. So, you know, you, I'm going to be scrubbing the windows. I'm going to be cleaning out the the um, tracks for the window sills and the, the um, screen, storm windows, screen windows. I'm going to be, you know, washing the floor, cleaning the floor, and sweeping the cobwebs out, that kind of stuff. But I'd already been going through some stuff and um, realized, once I realized that I didn't have limes, I didn't have toxic mold uh, issues, and I didn't have a mast cell problem, um, uh, I decided to fly in here. I decided to start hunting for then what in my space is making me stuffy all the freaking time. Stuffy, stuffy, sinusy, stuffy. And um, there was a fungus or mold thing growing on the wooden bed frame. That bed frame was not what I wanted. The gentleman who made it, I so appreciated his help. I so appreciated that he wanted for me to have a more comfortable place to sleep. I dropped stuff. I, I so appreciate that he had the skill to build that thing as good as he did, because that probably an elephant could jump on that thing. Anyway, um, I, I just appreciate it, but it wasn't what I wanted. I used it. Now look, I used it, what, two years? but it had a fungus and a mold and I had flipped it over thinking maybe there's a spider because I kept getting bit on the back of my neck and I figured they were spiders that were biting me because there's spiders here. Not, I don't see spiders as horrible. Of course, I'm careful. Okay. I'm not trying to get bit by a black widow or something, but I've never seen a black widow here. Doesn't mean they don't exist. I don't know if they do. Anyway, so... Yeah, so I found that. And so I left it flipped up and I was sort of like, well, what am I going to do with it? The wood is too good. I don't want to put it outside in the snow. I don't know what, how am I going to, how am I going to clean this up? How am I going to, and I really didn't want it originally because it was big and in the space, but partially because it was wooden. And I know for me personally, if it's a metal stuff or metal and fabric, I can wash fabric, I can scrub it, metal's not, maybe I'll rust, but it, nothing's really gonna go wrong with metal. And so um, I had 
a cot. I had other things around. So I finally, the weather's been good enough. Come on, fun. I finally put the wooden bed frame thing out on the back patio, which is that kitchen space, where I put it. And it's in the sunshine. Looks like it's killing the stuff, but I still don't know what to do with it because it's, you know, some good wood. Anyway, but then I started sleeping on that black cot. Okay, there's blankets and stuff on it. And Wendy has been playing, but that that's a cot. And so I've been sleeping on that, on that cot. I'm comfortable, not a problem. Okay. But I'm a senior. I have to start. I have to start at some point getting it in my space, in my head, that I'm not 20 anymore. I'm not 30 anymore. I'm not, you know, I'm 60 freaking five years old. <laughs> and I was going to say, and I ought to start acting like it. Yeah, heck no. Um, but I was raised in a religion that thought that the world was going to end in, in 1969 and then in 72. And the ministers at church were always preaching about how any of us kids, we were never going to grow up and we weren't going to finish high school. We weren't going to get married. We weren't going to have kids. Well, I never put any of that stuff in my head. I never, never had a, focus because the world was going to end. What was the big deal? You know, it was all going to be different and I wasn't going to have any control over it. So what difference does it make? So, you know, I grew up with some of those ideas <laughs> and then what, right? Being a senior is your over the hill gang. I know it's a bummer. That's what it's all about. The world gives up on you. That's an interesting, yeah. Um, so I've been through all this winter and alone time and everything, just kind of, what, what, God, where are you taking me? Why? I finally had a vehicle that was working well and I was starting to produce some decent videos and why the engine broke down and I can't get the thing home? Why I got to take a car a guy died in? Why I'm back home and I can't leave? Why I'm so alone? Why? What? Where are you taking me? What are we doing? What's the ride I'm on? What door can open? What... What focus should I have? What do you want out of me? <laughs> right? Then I thought, well, okay, I'll take the chickens. At least it'll keep me busy for a while. But I never, I was kind of doing that thinking that, you know, my son was supposed to come to visit. And, and I was, the reason he was coming to visit was for him to explore whether he wanted to inherit this place. And then I heard from him the other day and he's like, I'm just waiting for my, for my wife to leave me and to lose more children. And um, really, I don't know whether he goes, if you need to sell that place, you just sell that place. And I'm just like, what, what is all this, you know? And then like Jeremy came out and Jeremy wants to help. And yeah, I know you're in the background there listening, Jer, but um and everybody's got their own lives. They're all busy with their own stuff. Um, I'm not trying to pull people away from their stuff. But what the freak? What is this? What, 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 what? Everybody does this stuff. I know we all, I know I'm just as human as the next guy. And I'm not the only one that goes through these processes. I went through a pretty big one, similar but different in my early 40s, I think I was already 41 or 42, I had a horrible, horrible relationship breakup. 
four round bones. Okay. The guy actually tried to kill me a couple of times. Okay. And, um, and it was because I found his trophy photos of the nine other women that he had in my home, in my bed, with my dog. And I'm the one that was making money at a job I hated. <laughs> and uh, I wrote a poem. I, I have a couple of poems I wrote. It was kind of weird. I was experimenting with that because I used to paint oil paintings. And um, so then I like tried my hand at this feels so bad. And then it was, I got this little picture about, I feel like I was the broken glass on the sidewalk. Like I was so unwanted that I got smashed as if somebody threw a bottle out a window. I was so trash, so unwanted and that my family had been similar with me. Sorry, I, I don't know that I can do this without crying, but um, I had felt so much like that so much of my life that when this happened, I kind of hold myself up in an apartment. I had just lost my job and my car, my MR2. I loved my little MR2, I was restoring it. Toyotas are pretty decent vehicles. Anyway, there was a whole poem I wrote about death of a dream or so it seems. Uh, it, it's longer, but that's the beginnings of it. And then there was another one about being the broken glass on the, on the sidewalk and how you can't, you're not human and you can't pull your pieces back. They're everywhere and they're like some parts of it are so far away and you can't do anything to make it come back so you can be a whole person. It's a, it's a thing. It's a big thing. And so I went through a similar, I don't know where I am. I don't know what you want, God. What, what direction should I take? Where, what should I be doing? And um, so I think that these are pretty common human processes. And I've been going through it again. And here I am with, I thought chickens would help. They kept me busy for a little while. They did help me keep a little more sane, a little busier. <laughs> I had something to take care of. Um, but... I've already been through living on homesteads and, you know, I've been, I've done the wolf farm thing. I don't want to, I, I don't want to raise goats. I don't want to, didn't want to. Most of the time, my traveling in the winter and being in Yuma and stuff is really all about making sure I'm not here when it's snowy and I can't leave. Because that year, being in the vintage trailer with my boots freezing to the floor and I couldn't stay warm because I'm allergic to propane, I can't have propane, and the little wood stove I got, which thank you, Z, for the wood stove, but... It was too small. It wouldn't, it wouldn't keep a fire going. And I couldn't keep the creosote from building up in that little wood, wood stove. And Ozzy and I were freezing our asses off. And I was paralyzed. And for a little while, I think for about three months, I was using a walker. Teaching myself how to walk all over again. Because I had tried to stay at a neighbor's house because the local minister said, her husband just died. She needs you, you need her. So I went and I tried, but you know what? She tried to kill my ass. She was like, you're not allergic to propane and put propane right in my face. And then she's like, oh, you're not allergic to milk. This is what I'm fixing for dinner and it's what you get. I have a hunch she helped her husband not be around. Anyway, I'm just saying. <laughs> 
I don't need people like that. Some of the nomads that used to come to my spring get together. Some of them tried to squat here. They left me messes, like crazy messes, like cost me $200 to get the trash taken out of here. I, I, I can't afford people like that. I can't, I can't, I learned better boundaries through the whole process. The ones that showed up and said, I don't give a freak if it's your land. I'm doing what I want to do. I didn't come for you. Well, well, yeah, they don't get to come anymore. So, so I don't do the get togethers like I used to. Oh, uh, is that Kate? I can't see that the word is that Caitlin. Nice to have you. Welcome for coming. And it, Ask questions. Put some. Put three uppercase Qs so I can see your question. But ask questions because some people that are out here know me well and they know what I'm talking about. You might not. But anyway, so because of some of those situations, people don't come here unless I invite them here. But I keep in the back of my head for about three years now, in the back of my head, I've gone, I wonder if I should just sell. I don't want to sell. It's beautiful. It's a lovely place. But is that Kate? Um, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know where I'm at right now. This, let me consult the book again. Because, yes, this week I'll be doing my spring cleaning in preparation for Passover. And because of that, I'll be even more thinking about these things that I've already been thinking about. But it feels like I'm starting to get clearer and clearer. Now, I don't, so I've already mentioned the spring cleaning, the therapy. Um, I'm simplifying even more. It's kind of funny. I've been working on this for a long time, off and on. But I kind of had some goals when I was like picking up my titanium pots and pans um, because I I knew that titanium's lightweight enough that if I ever had to like take a bug out bag, I could carry my stuff with me. And because I'm not like other people with food, I've got to be able to prepare my own food. So I can do a lot with a knife and a fork. Uh, well, not even a fork. I don't even need a fork. I can do a lot with a stick, but um, sometimes it's nice to have other things. And um, so I invested in some nice titanium cookware, that small space stuff that if I decided to get on a plane and go somewhere else, I can take it with me and have my kitchen items. So basically that's what I'm saying is, is that, you know, I already worked on some of these simplifying things. It's one of the reasons why when I bought a radio, I got this little tiny itty bitty one that'll work anywhere in the world. Why? Because who knows where I'll end up because I know me and my life. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know where I'm going to go, but here, it works, which is wonderful. So, so I was going to start off with how do we define and settle these things, these life changes, these processes that go through. I mean, I'm not the only one. I know that you're not the only one to ever go through it. Yeah, you know, we... Oh, Kate. And I became homeless after uh, not even two days after my father's memorial service. They didn't really have a real funeral. Um, and I had just returned from Costa Rica and I'd been living in Costa Rica for seven years. And I ended relationships and gave away everything I had in case the family needed me only to be met by what the hell are you doing here? 
and then um, being kicked out on the street. And so that was, that was, yeah, that wasn't easy. That, that wasn't easy. So I understand you too, Kate. Um, anyway, um, so what I feel like's happening for me is I'm kind of, I look expired. Well, thank you so much. I am a senior. I'm 65 years old. You don't want to listen to me? Change channels. Don't be a putthead. Um, and I'm, that's not being mean. That's boundary setting. So um, I've decided that as I go through this next little piece, you know, on the heels of just having been uh, through the allergy attack as well, um, I've decided that as I'm doing my thinking process, I'm going to see about how I can redefine my senior life, my style, my body, because do I want to make changes again? Do I want to try to, you know, um, uh, and my work, uh, because the being disabled so many years, I don't know, work got weird for me. So, uh, hi, James, welcome. So, um, so I'm going to, as I go through my spring cleaning process this coming week in preparation for Sabbath, I mean, for uh, Passover, I'm going to rethink my senior life, my where, where will I be going forward? What do I want to look like? Who do I want to be as I'm headed out of here? Okay, I might not head out for, you know, until I'm 125, who knows? But um, anyways, um, I, I used to always have three to five year plans. I haven't been able to develop one for a while. Maybe since the year that I got so sick, so COVID year. So 2019, I got so sick right after Thanksgiving. It threw my whole life into a whirlwind tailspin thing um, that has always been a little challenging to like, uh, where am I going? And then when I got the diagnosis for MS, all I could think was, well, if I'm going to die, I'm, um, I'm going to, um, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to try to see if my friends will let me go to Baja with them because I know me, I'm a better person on a beach. I'm a better person around water. Um, I'm a, I'm a better person in warm weather. Oh, and yes, I got that real strong again this week because we had a cold day since I've talked to you last. And then we've had some really good warm ones. In fact, yesterday, my outdoor thermometer is in the shade on the front porch, which is on the north side. And so Yesterday, it was 79 degrees out uh, in the shade. I was like, whoa, okay. So I just felt so much freaking better once the weather's changed. And I will bring that up with my therapist as well because I never saw that as clear before. Um, <laughs> it's okay, Kate. You can you can make comments all you want. I see that that comment, but um. So uh, I have thought about writing a book, but I don't kind of know how to start. Anyway, so I thought I'd share with you some of my I don't knows. Because I'm not the only one that does this process. And when we do it, we bring up lots of I don't knows. So in me, off and on, I wonder about, you know, now that the chickens are going to go because they're not doing me any good, well, what am I going to do with that space? Well, of course, the chickens have done such a lovely job. If I could get that fly, I would get him in a heartbeat. He just keeps coming too close and then going away. Um, uh, 
so the chickens have done such a good job fertilizing and uh, working the ground in there, tilling it up, that I'll be able to plant a garden in there, which was what it was originally built for. Um, <laughs> yes, Mary. I think you and I talked about the I don't knows before one time, Mary. And, and I agree. Maybe we just live in it. Yeah, I don't know. But um, I thought about maybe I should go ahead and put a tub or put the shower in that space as well so that the drain from the tub or the shower would help water the plants. So then I don't know, but it's a possibility. Um, why? And I don't know. Why have I for two years, why have I had visiting Albania or Croatia on my mind? Why? Yeah, I'd like a tub too. Um, Mary, did you see the thing I posted the other day about uh, turning a uh, IBC tote into a hot tub, a wood-fired hot tub? That's what I'm thinking. Maybe we could put that in that once the chickens are gone, I get it all cleaned up again, and then I'll plant some plants in it. Maybe we put the hot tub inside there, and then it's protected, and you can use it in bad weather. It's an idea. And like I said, the drain can water the plants. So maybe, maybe, maybe. And I just found out this week that I've got, I've got, um, enough gutter. I didn't know this. I just figured out I have two scrap pieces of gutter that are long enough to put gutter on the shed outside to get rain catchment off that roof. That's better than nothing. So I may be Wendy, don't go so far. I can see Wendy in the in my peripheral vision, and she's barking at something, and but she's still in the yard, so she'll chase a rabbit and then she'll come right back. So um yeah, I get stopped at the idea of filling a tub too, but I don't mind so bad if like a hot tub or something, you can put sea salt in it and you can use the same water over and over again for a while before you got to dump it. I'm, I, I have to look into that some more. But um, if I'm doing rain catchment uh, or the water up here, if I have it hauled in, is a penny a gallon. And so that's not so bad. So I may be, I, I don't know. But it, it feels like, it. but how cool is that, that I found enough gutter without even realizing I had it, that maybe I can at least get rain catchment off of that shed. So, yes, even if you only fill it. Okay, so I had a friend up here who bought one of the uh, inflatable pools from, above ground inflatable pools from Walmart. He would have the big 2,000 gallon delivery tank truck, water truck, come up to his place to fill the pool. And anything over the, once his pool was full, he would keep the water in it all summer. And he had to put a cover over it because the free range cattle would drink from it and the birds would come bathe in it. And so he ended up having to put a cover over it but he could fill it once a season with the water chuck. And then, um, uh, then because I don't think it took 2000 gallons, but that water truck was funny. They wouldn't drop off the extra water with somebody else. They would just spill it on the ground. So 
uh, uh, just shake our heads, right? Oh, um, Caitlin, if you do me a favor next time and use upper three uppercase Qs, but I can see the question marks. So I'm used to the uppercase Qs is what I have everybody do. Best way to store heat sensitive item, items in the vehicle, medications, lotions for health problems, sunscreen, stuff like that. It's okay. That is absolutely fine. That's what I'm here for. I love helping. So, um, uh, Okay, Bernie, we'll see you later. Bernie said that she was being called and needs to go. I love you, honey. Okay, so Caitlin, um, I get inexpensive insulated lunch bags or tote bags. Um, so for example, come, come, come. I'm letting the dog in. Um, so for example, I don't think I have one here right now. I don't have one inside. If you can't afford them, get the silver bags from Dollar Tree. If you don't know this, in some grocery stores, they sell small ones. So the silver bags work really good. Just put a small hand towel or a dish towel inside and then put your items in. I found that to be helpful. What? You have a drink. Mama's on the Mama's on her video. You want to come up? I got to put the book down. I, I can't hold the book and you. Um, so yeah, I get either the silver bags that are like a dollar or come here, come here, or a dollar or maybe three dollars or three ninety nine, and then the other ones that work. You can go to a thrift store and get them, or you can, if you can afford them, like at Dollar General or someplace like that, you can get the inexpensive zippered lunch bags. They work great. Just, you know, when you first start out with them, keep them in the shade. And if it's cool at night, open the zipper a little bit, stick it outside for a little while so that it sucks in the cool air. Um, but aside from that, that's that's what I've done before. Um, yeah, baby wipes, um, shampoo bottles, so they don't like expand and spill, right? Although I use more baking soda and salt for things like that. Um, uh, but anything of that nature, that's what I do, just insulate them. Now, when I had the big van, uh, Van Tucket, I used to use milk crates because they would slide under my bed. And um, I, underneath the bed was much cooler than the rest of the van. And so I would just insulate a milk crate with towels or a blanket or a sweatshirt that I wasn't using and then cradle that stuff inside there and stick it under the bed. So how's that? Uh, is that helpful? I hope that's helpful. Um, KT says, I saw a video of elevating old cast iron in order to build the fire underneath. Yes, KT, that's wonderful. Love the idea. A problem with that idea is burning your butt. Um, the, the floor of the tub gets really stinking hot when you do that. So, um, so be careful what you, <laughs> be careful what you wish for. Oh, thank you, Kate. Yeah, Miss Wendy, Miss Wendy is, is working out well for me. I'm very disappointed in the rescue people. And Cece, if you're watching, I don't want to talk about it out loud. Yes, um, another thing that can help Iris. Okay, let me read what you said in case somebody doesn't see this later. Um, Iris said, that's how I keep my mayo, et cetera. I bought the hot, hot cold bag from Walmart, put it outside at night to cool down. Yes, and another trick 
is take a cotton or linen works really best, but you can use nearly anything fabric wise, um, but get like a dish towel, soak it in water, put it over the items in the opened bag where the air moves over the top. And that does what's called evaporative cooling. And that will keep the items inside the bag cooler as well, because as it dries the water off the towel, then it, um, it cools down the things that are below it because cool air sinks and hot air rises. Righty tighty, lefty Lucy, hot air rises, cool air sinks. There you go. So, yeah, Miss Wendy's a good girl. She tries, she she likes the chickens a lot. She she would love to play with them. There's a fly in here. You want to go get him? I would love it if you'd get that fly. I got what do you guys think of my new sweatshirt? You'll never guess that I only paid five cents for it. We had a, a family dollar slash dollar tree in Sanders, which is you know, 30 miles away, but they were closing the store 90% off. And it was, I don't know, they've already marked it down and then 90% off. I think I paid three cents for this shirt, um, but it was time I needed to replace my old sweatshirt. So, and as I see me in the phone screen, as I'm talking to y'all, um, I realize that uh, this is a good look still. I don't, I don't look like an old light lady trying to look young. So when I, I'm taking notes for when I do all this thinking coming up with my spring cleaning, I, I look pretty normal in a sweatshirt. So it's all right. For the evaporative cooling part of it, yes, Iris. And as the days get more hot, um, you want to put the bag in the shade, but where air can move across it, okay? And then that will, that will, that evaporative thing will help things stay cool. You can do the same thing with a cooler full of food. Uh, like, especially in Flagstaff, I've done it many times, that you put the cooler in the shade and then you put a wet towel over the opening of the cooler and you just prop the cooler enough so the animals can't get in it easily, but you just prop it enough, but the, ho the whole top of the cooler is covered with the wet cloth in the shade and um, it will help. You can keep things much longer that way. Oh, thank you so much. Um, Cece was, I mean, Kate was saying that it's a lovely color on me. Thank you. I, I have always felt like light colors up near my face was better. Caitlin, you look great. Yay. So Caitlin, I'm gonna read yours. You look great. My appearance is changing as I age. So is mine, okay? It's hard for women, especially who decide not to spend a lot of money on our appearances. Yes, I'd rather put any extra to keeping health though. Me as well. Now, it doesn't mean I don't like to look good or be clean or anything else. But I also like kind of natural things. So if you know me, you know this about me. So like I stopped shaving years ago and all the young people these days, they shave everything. So, you know, I'm a whole, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if anybody like got real close. They'd be like, oh, I don't, maybe they won't. You know, I guess I stopped wearing, okay. So like when I was young, I tried to wear nail polish. I was still at home. I wanted to be pretty. You know, I could have been, no, I couldn't have. Let me, let me take that back. I, I wanted to be like modestly sexy. 
And I was probably late junior high, early high school. And I thought, I don't see anything wrong with nail polish. So I put nail polish on, came to the breakfast table. The comments from my family, I never wore nail polish ever again, never again. Um, so I don't know, you know, I used to wear mascara once in a while. And then one day I went, why am I doing this? You know, the, the Egyptian women did it. There was a reason why, okay. Middle Eastern women that wore eyeliner, eyeliner came from charcoal out of the fire pits. Why did they put it around their eyes that way? To keep the flies out of their eyes. So if you do some of the history of some of these things, I'm not having trouble with flies in my eyes, okay? Um, but I did, I used to wear mascara sometimes. I used to try, and then I just go like, oh, this is ridiculous. Why am I even trying? And then um, when my kids were little, I started braiding my hair because, well, I moved from Maine to Virginia and the wind was crazy. And my hair is so long, okay. I cut my hair maybe, maybe four years ago, I cut it all off, real short. Um, I've done that maybe three times in my life, where one time I actually shaved my head. Um, but I was going through one of these thought process times and I was like, I, I don't know what to do and I can't stand me and I don't wanna see me in the mirror and yeah, 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 yeah. You know? and, um, but most of my adult life, well, most of my life, my braid has been below my knees. And so it takes about five, between five and eight years for my braid to be below my knees. It's not, I'm trying to remember. It's not, the braid is at my waist right now. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, it's at my waist right now. But um, once I learned how to get, uh, how to do a French braid by myself and to keep it so the wind wouldn't bother me so bad, but then I'd see myself in the, in a picture and I'd be like, I look like a freaking guy. If I'm gonna do this, I may as well cut it all off. And so I cut it all off one more time. And then I went, yeah, this doesn't work for me. Um, I, not until recently, I just started learning how to braid it off to the side. So you can, so it looks a little softer and a little more girl, girl like womanly. So, um, so, you know, I, I, I'm rethinking my style. And when I say that, I mean, like you said, Caitlin, um, my appearance is changing. And there are times when I get up close and I see me in another video and I'm like, oh man, I'm so wrinkled. I look so old. And then I'm like, or I, we get trolls. And the trolls are talking about how old and ugly I am and fat and whatever else. And, and then my brain goes, right? My thoughts go. Um, but part of this thought process will be, what do I want to look like? Where, where do I want my style to be? Has there been any part of my personal presentation to the world of who I am? Is there anything I missed out on doing that I want to get in before I'm not here anymore? And I will say that I have always felt so low income that I never have really allowed myself to have the fabrics that I know are the healthiest. That probably will be the direction I'm going with my clothing and stuff is to, um, I, I need to wear more linen and wool and 100% cotton. I need to I need to do more of that. I need to show that side of me outwardly. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> Iris, uh, Iris says, I'm covering my veil with charcoal if it keeps the flies away. Yeah, it won't keep the flies away. It will and it won't. I actually buy those. Is it rescue the green and white? fly bags. 
Um, this time I bought one, I'm looking at it, it's out on a tree out, outside. Uh, this time I got one of the refillable ones that's like a, it's bigger than a quart, well, it might be a quart and a half jar or a half gallon jar or something like that, that hangs from a tree um, because there's free range cattle out here. So there's, you know, there's flies. And I need to get two or three more of those. I could have four here for flies. And uh, I used to I used to travel with those as well because flies can be beyond annoying. <laughs> um, um, Iris, what I used to do with my van was I got a sarong like you would get from a beach or you could use a um, bed sheet. Like, I think you have a minivan. Get yourself a, get yourself a uh, king size bed sheet from a thrift store. Don't spray it with water, dunk it in a bucket and then hang it over the door on your, if you're in camp, not if you're in a parking lot. And then, um, then um, put it over your open door on the van. It'll keep the flies out, but it it also does that same evaporative thing as the air dries the the sheet or the or the um, sarong. It'll bring cool air into your space. And you can do the same thing over your windows. What you're trying to do, the goal is to keep the sun off the glass. So put the fabric on the outside of the glass of your vehicle, not on the inside. Yes, you want it on the inside for like curtains, but in the summer in Arizona to keep cooler, you want fabric on the outside to prevent the sun and heat getting to the glass, which is what will heat up the inside of the car. So anything you can do, if you can hang a tarp between trees and get under the tarp, and even with an airspace of six to eight inches of space above the rig, unfortunately, most of you have your solar panels up there. But if you can do that and get under, something, your vehicle will stay much cooler. Smart casual, there you go. I still have this modestly sexy thing. I don't know what that's about, but I came up with it when I was young, so whoops. Wendy was trying to jump. We'll help her out. So um, it's really more coffee left. Let's see. You want to go back out? Let me see what people are asking. You know, I had to learn tricks about how to stay cooler in in Arizona. In Arizona, I did a lot of the things you guys are doing now. You know, I went to Perump. I tried to help other people and got chewed out by people who didn't know what they were talking about. Um, but because I was the person who'd been around the longest, it's my fault that they didn't like what I said. No, y'all just need to like grow your freak up and notice what people are doing. Um, not everybody's so nice. Anyways, but... <laughs> Some of that being said, I don't like being hot, too hot. I've been in, I've been, good girl, Wendy's killing a fly. Um, let me, let me pick this up though, Wendy. I'm afraid you're going to unplug the Wii Boost, which would be a problem for the people watching Mama on the phone. So let's, there we go. Okay, I got it up. Now you can get it. So, um, so 
I had to learn how to be cool without having a tent because I needed to get away from people sometimes. Um, people's noises are too much. Or how about this? No, How many nomads even think about the fact that they're outside showering and washing their clothes with chemicals and the person that they park next to is allergic to them, but they don't check because they don't think about it. Why do you think I go to a laundromat at five o'clock in the morning? Because at five o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning when they're opening the, the um, laundromat, nobody has put chemicals in the dryer yet. Nobody's laundry soap is still in the washing machine. So if I go that early in the morning, I'm not having an allergy attack. Makes sense, right? But then somebody comes and parks right beside me because they're like, I'm a newbie and I'm scared. And they pull up four feet from your car and they're washing their hair with shampoo. I can't get away fast enough, but I'm trying not to be mean to these people because they're new, but dang it. I can't, I can't, y'all gonna kill my ass. So I camp away from people and you know, I, okay, one, one of my first couple of years, I found this beautiful spot in Ehrenberg set up and I'm like, this is my campsite. And then I had to run to town. Well, I come back from town and don't you know, Bob Wells and two of his friends moved into my spot and they were not going to let me be anywhere near them. So I was like, all right, let me move. Let me figure out. And it was right under a nice tree. So then it was, let me find a spot. How can I do this? So over time, I figured out how to keep cool and how to do it on a budget because I didn't have any money. And, um, and still don't come on, you know, basically I don't. So, um, when I could afford it, when I found the silver shade cloth, what's it? Illuminate shade cloth. I found some on Amazon. I think it's in my Amazon store so you can find it. If it's not, let me know and I'll find the link for you because I can look back in my history and find where, where I bought it. But when I found it on sale, um, I'm just seeing something. Hang on a second. Oh, crap. I'm not seeing all y'all's messages. Poop. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what I missed. Um, um, but... The Illuminate, once I found that on sale and I found a small one, it might have been six by eight. I don't think it was eight by 10. I bought it when I found it for $40 because it's, it used to be really expensive, like under over $100 for a small piece. Anyways, if you can get your hands on that, you can drape it over parts of your car that are not your solar panel and I'm telling you, it drops the temperature inside your vehicle by crazy amounts. I used to put it on the back of my SUVs. I would just open the back hatch door and just lay it over the back and put a couple of magnets through the grommets to keep it so it would blow away. And um, oh, that would drop the temperature in the cab, car like crazy amounts, good amounts. It's worth it. It's worth it. I still have a piece somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. I don't think it's in the car. I have a piece. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Oh, I do too. It's in the green bag down here. Yeah. Mm. When I moved the wooden bed frame because of the fungus mold thing I found, I realized that I really am a lot closer to my minimalist goals. Oh, see, I do have goals. I just hurt myself. But I'm very much closer to my minimalist goals than I had thought I was because basically I have two duffel bags and it's everything that I own. I could turn it into only one and I could like move with only that. 
one or two of those bags and not have to take everything. Because there's a lot of things I have here that have that are for here. Like the red tea kettle, I wouldn't, if I was moving, that would stay right here with the wood stove because it works with the wood stove. Why, why take it? Right. That makes sense. The, uh, the chairs out here, they just, they, they're for here. And so um, it's, it's funny that my personal belongings really fit in less than two big duffel bags. So, okay, more questions, guys? Or have I lost you and I don't know it? I don't think I've lost you. No, but I see I have. All right, Wendy Wu's barking outside. Okay, not doing that. Okay. I checked. I checked to see what's going on. Okay. I don't think, I think we're still, yeah, I still got five bars of signal. I don't know why the phone's not charging like normal, but whatever. Yeah, more questions? More things you want me to talk about? This senior thing, I remember turning 40 and wondering what 40 would be like and thinking that I was, you know, passing some, what would you call it? Passing some thing, right? And I remember at the time talking to somebody who was into what what would we have called it back then um like they were more into astrology and stuff like that right and i'm not really big into that i understand i have a general sense of a pretty good general sense of what that is you know but um her viewpoints were different from mine, but she said intuitionally, she just felt horrible about whatever relationship I was in. And would I be careful? And would I please get out of that when it was appropriate? Don't you know, it wasn't even six months later when that horrible breakup happened. And it was him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Would you set up and get a bigger van? You would have money to live off, wouldn't you, Nomad Full Time? Eh. Eh. So I don't know if you saw, Kate, that um, Tristan from SUVR being uh, a year ago now, maybe a little more than a year ago, had done an interview with me and my Chevy Tracker. Yes, the last vehicle I was living out of was last summer for my 65th birthday, my engine blew on my Chevy Tracker. It's technically a vintage vehicle. It's very tiny. I love, loved that love, love, loved that. Hi, River Rat. Thank you. Um, I love that vehicle. I always wanted a two-door Wrangler Jeep, and it's not within my budget. And when I found that 98 white Chevy Tracker, it looks enough like a Wrangler to be my jam, and I can afford it, and I can afford to fix it, except for when the engine blew. So now I'm working on trying to get that vehicle back and get it fixed. I don't know what that looks like yet. Um, we are very close to me being able to go get it. I need at least $1,000 to go after it. Last I checked, the fund for going after it is at $700. 
So I need about $300 more before we can make the trip to go get it. But the guys from the mechanic shop, Jeremy and Stan, the Stans, they're all on board with going after it. And then they will work at rebuilding the en- the new engine. And It's been a saga. But um, to answer your question, this is a hard one for me to answer. I do not want a larger van. I personally don't like driving large vehicles. Am I capable? Yes. I've driven school buses, uh, dump trucks. I'm capable. That's not the issue. I don't like it. Now, now that I'm saying that, I'm wondering, I wonder if it has any if my reason for that has something to do with the autoimmune disease I was diagnosed with a couple years ago. I don't know. Because like in my regular life, I want space. I want elbow room wherever I am. Part of that is because because there's a piece of that that has to do with if I if I'm clumsy or I, or I trip over my own foot, I don't want to break something. I don't want to get hurt. So the more space there is, the less risk. I don't know. So I know I had Van Tucket. Now Van Tucket was a 97 Chevy G20 regular height van. It was navy blue. Um, we used rust-oleum in a can with a paintbrush to paint white roof. That dropped the temperature 10, 20 degrees, 20 degrees. Dropped the temperature 20 degrees. Um, inside, it had white beadboard paneling. I think I like white beadboard paneling. It had white beadboard paneling, white vinyl floor, and a teal blue marble effect uh, marble uh, uh, crackle finish uh, countertop. It wasn't built exactly the way I wanted it, but what I learned was that if I have enough supplies, I can stay inside and never go outdoors a long time, a month, three, four weeks, as long as my poop bags are not getting too many. Until I got to dump them, I don't have to. Until I have to go resupply, I don't have to leave. That's a problem for me. Um, Then I can get depressed because I feel trapped and I can't get out. And so, um, but if there's too many people around or if there's, because people weren't safe. Now, I think a little different now than I did. But my general answer to would I get a big van and start over? No. Would I get on a plane and go somewhere? Probably first I would do that. And probably second, I don't know, but I would, but I would always stay with a smaller vehicle. I do sometimes kind of toy with the idea of Volkswagen van size or um, what's the other one, Delicas, uh, but they're usually foreign made because because that's who makes them. But I, I don't, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. It, they're a little smaller, I know it's about that. I don't have issues with using the bathroom outside. I have different ways, like I still have my, my, um, Instaprivy, which is the the um, the bathroom shelter thing that you can wear, you can put it on your head like a hat or hang it from a tree or something, and then you sit down and it comes down over you. It's kind of a circular thing. I still have that. Um, it makes a good shower, wash up, change clothes space as well. It's a little awkward if you have it on your head, but I used to hang it from the back of the vehicle. So there's ways to do these things, and so. I've gotten so good at the small space stuff, but I just like it. 
So I think, and for me to be my healthiest, being outside more than I'm inside is better for me every day. So like this winter when it's so cold and I have to be inside, I start to get depressed. I start to have trouble with when am I ever going to be able to get outside again? And then the weather breaks and I'm like, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm not dead. I didn't die. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let me go back and check. I see some cues. Uh, oh, thank you. Iris said that that was an awesome interview with, um, with, uh, Tristan, you know, I did another one about how I did my hair, uh, with, oh, I forgot what her name is. I've done a lot of interviews over the years. So Bob's probably got seven interviews with me. Lots of interviews with me. I feel like I'm better at interviews than I am trying to do all this stuff on my own, but whatever, I just keep, I just keep at it. I learned of you from that video such, oh, thank you, KT. Sonia, let's see, you've got cues. What's going on here? Could you display your total kitchen requirements for next week's live? Sure, um, but requirements is relative. Please understand that. Um, I am allergic to propane. I want to be able to at least make a hot drink. I do like my coffee, but I, at least make hot water, right? I want to be able to at least make a hot drink on a cold day inside, no matter what rig I'm in, because if it's too cold to get out, I at least want to get my hands warm before I try to get out. So relative is your mileage may differ, your needs, your style of cooking, your food, it's all going to be different from mine, but I will prepare for next week and we will look at kitchen things that I think are a good idea and what's my preferred for if I was going to either get on a plane and go to a foreign country tomorrow, or I was going to get back in my car and go camping tomorrow, what would I take with me? How's that sound? Yeah. 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 You know, it's funny. I live on a little more than 250 a month, but except for groceries, it feels like it's the same. Uh, yes, Iris, carrying enough water is a reason for having to break camp. But I found, do you remember, even with my tracker, I found ways to carry more and more water. So I had TJ Shack, who sometimes comes out, friends of ours out here, um, bought me the water port. It's right around four gallons. It's, it's European measurements. So it's 3.8 liters or something, but real close to four gallon water tank that goes in a receiver hitch on your vehicle. That's one way I carried water in the tracker because I couldn't be on some of those long two track dirt, four wheel drive trails on the Baja Divide Trail in, um, in Baja, I couldn't be on those and not have enough water to either refill my radiator or be safe enough to be okay. Um, when you're traveling with a group of overlanders, there's a few re requirements for you to be able to keep up with the group and be safe. And so one of those, in fact, some of you um, follow Rebel Minor, and if you've ever, Mary, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you've ever gone on one of his rock hunting trips, I think Mary has, 
um, with Rebel Miner, he tells you, you have to have, I don't remember how much water, but there's a certain amount of water because you are not going to be near civilization. You can't just go get a gallon of water somewhere to fix a problem in your car, especially a radiator. So I think that the general rule is that you have enough to fill your radiator plus some, just in case. And so um, uh, the water port, I find has been wonderful, especially in the tracker, because then I've got four gallons of water outside, not inside with me, right? And then um, when Tristan was doing that video, I didn't have all the more expensive, fun things that make it easier to organize. But, and I, I didn't, I don't think I had the solar panel on the hood at that time. I got the Cascadia four by four solar panel that is glued to your front hood, helps charge your drive battery as well as your house batteries. It separates the two systems actually, so that there's no, what's the thing called? The, the thing that you can turn off or change so that you're charging your drive batteries and or, or your house batteries, but you're not doing both at the same time. I forgot what that thing's called. It's a shut off thing anyways. Um, the way that the Cascadia system was designed was um, that there's separate cables that go to your drive battery and another set of cables that go to your, to your house batteries. So that they're both being charged, but they have their own systems. And so um, I didn't have that on there when Tristan did that video. And then I got a uh, three and a half gallon uh, jerry can. I like it, but the reason I got it, the great big opening on it, I thought this will be great. I can dump a bag of ice in it. Great idea. It, if you put ice in it, it sweats all over. So. I had more trouble, not from it leaking, but from it sweating. And it just wasn't convenient for me to pour out of. And it was awkward. So that's not my favorite of the water jugs either. I guess I've gotten off on the water jugs thing. But I want to show you, is it okay if I do this? I don't think you guys mind. We're, we're about at two hours, but I don't think you guys mind. Um, I just found these bags on Amazon. Now, somebody else I'm sure has already had these, okay? It says ice bag or water bag, right? Uh, leak proof, Ziploc, ice bag, also water bag, capacity five pounds of ice or 10 pounds of water. Now, I can't tell you what 10 pounds of water is. It's more than a gallon, okay? But the cool thing is, you can put ice in here, which is what I did. There's only a little bit left. Of, oh, you can see in the, I didn't know you could see in the bottom. There you go. There's only a little bit in here. I filled these. I, got, I bought a seven pound bag of ice and I filled this one all the way up and I just put what was left in this one and I let it melt and I could use the cold water. These are pretty cool. Now it says they're, they're thick. They're, they're really thick plastic. I, I would put these in the tracker. I would so I would so put these because I also know they'd fit down in the front footwell. Now, if I was worried, but they didn't seem to sweat. But if I was worried about them sweating, I could wrap them in a towel and put them down there. My my white tracker still has carpet. The blue one doesn't have any carpet in it. But so um, if I thought they were going to sweat, I just put a towel around them and stuff them up because they, they are thick plastic and they don't mush. They don't mush that much. And they do have a zipper as well as these, these handles slide on. Can, do, you, do you know what? I, I don't need to take that apart to show you. They just, I, okay, I can show you by doing that. The first time I did it, it was kind of hard to maneuver, but so you you zip the Ziploc part, you zip here, 
And then you put this thing on and the combination keeps it from leaking. And the faucets are great. And of course you could hang this. If you have a roof rack thing, you could just, you know, tie a little piece of paracord or a, have a um, have a couple of hooks, S hooks, and you could hang it off the side. So uh, these are nice. Um, they're a little tall for my, they're a little tall for my um, moose jumper that Bernie got me last year. It, they, I can't fill them all the way full and I have to bend the top down before I can close the cooler. They take quite a bit of space in the cooler because of the spigot on them, but they work. Okay, so I don't know. I also have one of the Coleman, no, Reliance um, fold up five gallon. Oh, if I move the phone, I hope we don't lose the signal. Can you see with the red handle right there, that bag is a five gallon one. Um, I needed a container that would, that I could maneuver the other day because I don't have any water here because my tank is, okay, so my big IBC tank is 300 gallons. It's empty. It needs to be cleaned. And the spigot was leaking from the day one when I got it. So that needs fixing and I'm waiting on the neighbor, but he his transmission went in his vehicle. So waiting for his vehicle to get fixed so that I can have water again like that. Okay, <laughs> so, so I got it so that I was able to carry um, six, no, eight, okay, wait, four gallons and four gallons or three and a half and three and a half. It was close enough. So, so yeah, so I remember having seven gallons and then at that time when, when Tristan was doing stuff, I was drinking a lot of Pellegrino at the time or sparkling water. I still like it. I just had to cut my budget. And so I cut that out at $2 a bottle or whatever it was. I was like, no, I need to, I need to conserve money. No, I'm not going to do that. I will just wait. I'll use sparkling water or Pellegrino as a treat. And so um, if I go out with somebody, I could have a color green. So um, I was carrying three gallons of Pellegrino and eight gallons of water. And that's in my tracker. And so I could stay out quite a while. Um, I'm good at conserving my water to take a bath. I use a, do I have it in here? I use a small bowl and a washcloth. Now, I have used, this is a titanium Sierra mug. I have used this, but I prefer, oh, I do, I do have one inside. I prefer this bowl for washing up, for, for my morning washcloth, cold water, hot water. Scrub, <laughs> scrub, right? That This is my preferred bowl for that. And I probably have four of these. I've had a lot of these over the years. And a lot of times people in camp just see me and go, oh, I love your bowl, where'd you get that? And I just hand them to them. They, they cost three or $4 a piece, so I'm just saying. But I love this size bowl, it just works really great, so. Um, I don't like silicone as much as I do enamel. I, experience, years of doing things, who knows what it is. Let me catch up on your messages. Uh, and let, before I catch up on your messages, let me check Wendy. Do you wanna come in? Okay, good girl. Mommy's still on the phone doing the video. We won't be much longer, okay? All right, Mama's gonna read the, I'm gonna read the messages. You're a good girl. All right.
Uh, Kate, uh, you said, bless you. I had a dream of living in a van when I was 15. I've never done it. So I used to pay attention to things like hippies and whatnot in the 60s when I was growing up. And I lived in a van the very first time in 1978. My ex-husband did not like to pay rent. I didn't like getting yelled at by the landlord because of what my ex-husband wouldn't do. So I said, the hippies live in vans. We can do it. And we did right up until just before my son was born. And then we tried an apartment. He still didn't like to pay rent. And then we moved to Maine, where I was from, uh, but to a town I wasn't from, further north Maine, uh, Corinna. And I built what up there is considered a cabin on a brook. My ex-husband had a gun to my pregnant belly more than once. Um, and then um, I left him. And I had arranged with the owner we were buying the land owner finance for me to come back with the kids and raise the kids there and after I left he gave the cabin to somebody else so I ended up in Virginia <sighs> taking a break from bagging a mile high pie of dirty insulation will celebrate that I didn't die when I'm done. Insulation, not fun. And especially if the rats and stuff have been in it. Oh, good Lord. When I cleaned up that old cabin from the previous owner here, uh, it actually is on his land. He kept half of the land um, on the other side, but I dismantled and cleaned up that cabin. And not only had the rats gotten in the insulation but then the rattlesnakes got in and um when i cleaned that up that was oh that was scary <laughs> dangerous and oh and you can't breathe be careful mary with what you're doing hey sonia let's see uh let's see Oh, Katie, I'm 66 and dreamed of leaving Florida to travel out west since I was 16. Please think about trying this before you get too old to enjoy it. There you go. Yeah, um, Rebel Miner installed his, you want outside? What do you want, Wendy? You make me go in circles. You want outside. Um, <laughs> um, Rebel installed his different than mine, and he put just a regular panel on the hood of his. But of course, he has more construction and mechanical knowledge than I do. So when I was hunting for a way to do that, because the tracker's tiny, and I wanted my refrigerator to run 24 seven. I didn't want to have to keep unplugging and plugging it back in and, you know, running it when I'm driving and then when I'm not, and it was just too much. It was like, and I just don't have enough space for all the extra pieces. So I, um, I went hunting specifically for, is there somebody who makes something that works that can be glued on the hood and won't come off? And so Jeremy helped me install, well, helped Jeremy, I helped Jeremy install that on the hood of the tracker. And it's wonderful. <sighs> okay, Iris, question. Where did you buy these, Lisa? The bags, I have not put them into my Amazon store but I got them off Amazon and they were a set came as two. And I believe that they were 12 or $15. I don't want to be telling a lie, right? Um, so 12, say 12 or $15 for the two of those really good, strong quality. First time you try to zip them, 
the, the Ziploc part, hard to do. First time you try to put the handle on it, really hard to do. Or maybe my hands were being weak that day. I'm 65, blame it on that. No, <laughs> but um, it, just be patient with yourself. And the plastic is really strong. So don't expect that you're going to smoosh these and stuff. Um, you're going to be careful with them a little bit. I, well, I don't be careful. I just mean they're, they're, they're heavy duty. They're not, they're not trash. And of course, protect the little spigot, but the spigot works great on those things. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, Iris, I see you mentioned in the caravans. You know, let me be quiet. You know where they got the idea for the caravans? I used to, near the end of RTRs, I used to ask people to raise their hands, anybody that wanted to camp with me for between five and seven days. I think I started off seven to 10 days and I had to make it shorter because I was just like, oh, we're wearing me out. And I was like, I'll take seven to 10 people for this many days. You can camp with me. Then you'll know how to pick out a campsite. You'll know how to give and follow directions. And um, you'll have access to me for an entire week or whatever. And I expect you at whatever stage that you are comfortable, you graduate yourself. If you're done after two days and there's nothing more you need from us, blessings go on your way. <laughs> and if you need more, I'm going to leave at 10 days. That's, that's all you get. <laughs> and so, yeah. And yes, I am friendly with Bob and Sue Ann, most of those people. Some of the new people I didn't click with the same or we just haven't met because a lot of people, because I wasn't in the movie that year, because I was paralyzed that year, stuck in a three foot snowstorm up here the year that they filmed the movie. And I told every time that they got a hold of me and they said, you can't tell anybody, you can't call anybody you know, you can't talk about this to anybody. But, and I'm like, well, can somebody come help me get there? I've got a vehicle, I can come, but I can't drive myself. And they were like, yeah, 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 we'll send somebody, they never sent anybody, yeah, whatever. And so that's when I lost connection with the bigger groups anyways whatever oh that's nice kate that your vehicle folds down have your ha, yeah iris is saying in her minivan half of her van is bedding i bet it is <laughs> yeah, I don't know about moving to the U.S., Kate. To be honest with you, I kind of wish I could move away. I have lived as an expat outside the state, states before. It's, you know, it's not all that it's cracked up to be out here. <laughs> and, and the way society is now, I don't know. So I do off and on, I entertain thoughts of moving to Albania. Um, you know, I already did Costa Rica, so why do that again? Um, uh, not interested in Central America unless I went to Chile. And that would be for Chilean passport, right? Um, France is too expensive, even though my family name was French. And evidently there's a town with the same name. So I probably could like figure out a way to go to France, but eh. Norway, 
too cold in the winter. But you know, all these things, it's probably because I've always had that escape fantasy thing. Lots of, lots of us do these things. And if we're inclined to live in vehicles, we're inclined to travel. And so we entertain ideas when things aren't going well. And so, you know, I loved long distance hiking. What I didn't like was in the United States, having things thrown at you from vehicles when you get out on a road to do your resupply. And as a solo woman who doesn't have very good connections, well, don't didn't have any friends when I was doing that, um, it's hard to be in those situations. Or, you know, that guy that almost raped me trying to get, for me, trying to get to a grocery store. Um, that stuff's not fun. And um, I'm not saying you can't get through it. We could be tough birds. We could be, some people call it badass, right? We could be. I can be. I Okay, look. I spent some time homeless on purpose. I put myself in a situation where I would be homeless in New York City in order to get into a certain apartment after I became disabled. You try being homeless in New York City. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You think I didn't learn street smarts? Oh, yeah, I learned street smarts. So I could be a badass. So, yeah. Um, I can kick butt if I have to. I just don't want to. I want to be nice. I like the nicer. I want the world to be more like this. And if it's what I want the world to be like, then I need to be an example. And so I think we should be neighborly and we should help each other. But I don't think the U.S. is the be all end all. I really don't. Um, in fact, interesting that I was watching a video of a guy who just got his residency in Albania and he was from the States and he just got his residency in the last month or so. And guess what he did? He went to Albania. He got his, he's been there five years now. It takes five years to get your residency. And he, um, he got his housing situation taken care of. He got himself a couple of dogs. He's got some expat friends and some other friends. And he bought a van and he started outfitting it like an overland van. And he goes on little trips on the weekend. Why not do it anywhere? Come on. Um, uh, what's her name? Okay, my brain's uh, having a brain fart again um, uh, because I know her by a different name. Um, Vilk and her, her dog's name is Vilk. Um, Eva is from Poland. She got into overlanding and I met her at Overland Expo and she's from Poland. And she came over to this side of the world and started a whole trip, got partway down into Mexico and did something like I've been going through. And she went, oh, what am I doing? I'm not sure. And she shipped her vehicle back over to Europe and she's over, she was just at the Arctic Circle on the Norway side of things. So we don't have to be here to do that. So that's kind of cool. See, that's what I'm saying. With my family being French, okay, bouge moi, or Beauchemin, um, and we've been told French Canadian. Okay, French in Maine were not hoity toities. They were, they were the blue collar worker gypsies, and. My family evidently settled in Kenny Bunkport. So I bet you this, there's probably something in my background that makes me see a Vardo trailer and go, yeah, that's what we should do. We should get the little, you know, the cute Vardo. 
have a rocking chair. Yeah. But so I'm just saying that even if I went to another country, I imagine me doing the same thing somewhere else. In fact, I kept saying if I hadn't to go with me, I kept saying that I would actually go, I would take the tracker to, <laughs> oh no, Jeremy, what? OMG, what? Anyway, um, that if the tracker was still going good, I was like, let's go all the way to the, to the Arctic Circle above Alaska, turn around, and come back on the Pan American Highway and keep going south and go all the way to Argentina and then put it on a truck, I mean, on a, on a, on a boat and get it over to Africa and let's just keep going. I'm just saying. <laughs> on the cover of my book, okay. I, I guess I do need to learn how to write a book. Um, I just feel like I don't know. I, you know what? My confidence level has been low. I mean, I've had reason. Obviously, you guys hear enough of my stories. Obviously, I have reason. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But hey, you know, I, I don't give up. I just keep trying. And, uh, you know, Maybe I stab at it and it doesn't go well or I get upset about something or so what? So what I cry once in a while? So what it feels bad? So what? Don't come back and tell me that right in the middle of me not feeling good, okay? That won't help. But so what? <laughs> I'll get over it. I'll get through it. I'm moving right along, right? It won't be as bad. So, you know, I tested the egg allergy. I thought I was going to die there for a couple of hours. And then I was like, wait a minute, take a nap. If I wake up from the nap, then I'm probably going to get better. Because I mean, what else is going to happen? <laughs> and so I do, yeah. I should have asked somebody to wake me up in a couple of hours. I'll try to put that in the, in the, plans for next time to say, hey, look, I'm going to lay down, but in two hours, call me and make sure I wake up. That, that, that would be smart, but hopefully I don't have to do that too much. Okay. If you Google Kitsy, a program years ago, that was going to be in my life. Ooh, cool. I'm going to look later. I'm not going to look now. How are we doing? Two hours and 14 minutes. Do we have more questions? Anything? I, I would touch on some of the kitchen stuff, but I like the idea of preparing ahead of time to do the kitchen stuff because I got kitchen stuff. And I have a sink full of dirty dishes outside because I don't have enough water to get them washed. And if I, um, if, if we wait till next week, then I can have more clean ones to show you than dirty ones. And whatever I've done lately, my refrigerator is, the food inside is solid frozen and it's been running and not unplugging itself. Jeez. I just don't breathe near it. <laughs> um, what else, what else should we talk about? Anything or are we done for today? So I hope I gave you some, some support and encouragement for the fact that we all go through the same stuff and the fact that I'm starting to, or whatever, that I'm going through this getting real about the senior part of my life and what I want that to look like. Um, uh, I, you know, having a focus helps. Boats. <laughs> I do like boats. Now, back in the day, okay, my high school pictures were taken on a three-mast schooner. 
I grew up in, near Portsmouth, New Hampshire, like Elliott, Maine is the town I was in where I was raised. Um, Kittery is right next door, which is Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. And Portsmouth was a seaport from, you know, way back history, 1700s. So boats, I do like a boat. Yeah. Do I want one? No. When I was younger, I wanted to do sailboat life. If I wasn't my age, I might attempt sailboat life, but not, not, not now at my age. Thank you, Iris, that you enjoy our Sundays together and with the community. I agree. I like it a lot. The fellowship and the, you know, we pray for each other. We, yeah. When is my, Kate, when is your live next week? I need to work out the time difference. Yes. So it is 9.30 a.m. Arizona, USA time each Sunday unless I cancel for some odd reason, which has only happened maybe two or three times in the last couple of years. So um, 9.30 a.m. Sunday mornings. Um, boat. <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy bought himself. Well, I guess he has bought himself two boats. One's aluminum and not as much work as the other one. The other one's fiberglass. And he's got work to do to it. But he thinks that it's a boat that his grandfather designed. And it's kind of one of those water ski and ski, ski boats that you start off in the water like this. And then they gun the engine and they're you know, plowing water this way. Um, He's kind of excited that he's playing with getting to restore a couple of boats. So, um, Sonia. Thank you, Sonia. Yes, everybody pray for each other. Pray for our guidance. Um, for people like me who are going through stuff. Oh, a catamaran. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A catamaran. For, for people like me who, um, who are going through, you know, a life change stage thing, being able to um, get some clarity and peace about the process, that would be a nice thing to pray for. For example, like Mary going through her big change, I'm sure she's got a lot of excitement, but with fiberglass and rats and mice and possibly snakes, let's pray for her safety too, please. Um, Catherine and Homer still having some up in the air with where they're going to be um, as they're retiring. They're not in love with the idea of working more they don't know about whether to put the new engine in their via in their motor home and do they have big decisions too so i think that that praying for clarity and um peace and goal setting for a lot of us might be really helpful um you know for me I need to be able to see a little further out than what's right in my lap. Um, oh yes, that's true, Jeremy. Yep. Uh, so yeah, pray, pray for everybody out here. Uh, pray for each other. Um, hugs and loves. I can't remember what my normal ending is. Oh, I wish you could see. I'm afraid to touch the phone. After I say this ending thing, I'm going to try to turn you around. You might be able to see Wendy on the back porch. She's sitting on top of that wooden bed frame thing in the sun. Just she looks like a little lioness. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Take care of each other. Pray for each other. Um, if you need any specific help, let me know. I'll do what I can. 
Um, uh, let's see. Um, I'll work on the kitchen idea for next week. I don't know what else to say. Yep. Keep on keeping on. Keep it simple. And now I'm going to try to show you Wendy as we get ready to go. So let's see. If I put the phone here, look out the window. Can you see her laying there on that? Oh, she turned around because I said something. Whoops. The angle is weird. Oh, she stood up. Oh, now she got a fly to chase. All right. Y'all have a good week. Love y'all. Ciao.